Hello, in this video I'm going to go over the basics of animation and animation logic in Unreal Engine and how it all comes together in the engine. This is going to be a video series and as we go through it I'm going to show you how to create animations for running, walking, and any kind of animation where you have to loop. And then I'm going to go over to um, adding basic animations like abilities to your character and how to add sound to them like the following. And then I'm going to go into more depth of adding VFX effects to your animations to make them more realistic, like the following. Clouds beneath me! And um, after that, we may actually go into animations that change the pose of your character. And with all that knowledge, you're going to be able to create any kind of um, animation logic in your games. And um, it really comes down to these four or five fundamentals that we're going to go over. So with that, let's get into it. All right, so let's let's start by looking at how Unreal Engine works under the hood and learn some basic fundamentals about it. So in order to do this, the best way is to go through an example. So let's say you have some electronics, right? So there's a bunch of stuff that would fall under it, right? TVs, computers, etc. So we can make an arrow from electronics and then um, get to computers, right? So a computer is a type of electronic and but an electronic um, any electronic device is not necessarily a computer right so underneath computers we also have different stuff right we have laptops we have tablets we have pcs so let's say we choose a pc so as you can see as we go forward from electronics to computers to pcs we are getting more um, specific and each one of these have their own functionalities right so the more narrower we get the more specific the functionality is that we want from it and then we can keep going, right? So from the PCs, we can go into like all the different brands uh, of PCs, etc., etc. But understand the concept of we have electronics, which can lead, which has a computer as a subgroup of electronics, which has a PC, which is a subgroup of computers. Um, Unreal Engine uses the exact same concept to build games or worlds or movies because of what we are going to be discussing in these series of videos. I'm not going to cover all groups and subgroups, but what's more important to us. So anything in Unreal Engine, whenever you actually place it into the world, Unreal Engine refers to it as an actor. And it makes sense because it plays a role in the world. Now, actor has actors have a bunch of different subgroups, but what, the one I want to focus on today is a pawn. So a pawn is an actor, right? It's just like um, these are, you can associate each one of these with the ones above it in the example. So just like a computer was an electronic device, a pawn is an actor, but it, 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 it uh, serves a specific purpose. And the purpose it serves is it can be controlled. So a pawn, a pawn can be controlled, whether that's by AI or by a player or by anything else or some piece of logic that you wrote in your application where you say, I want you to move from point A to point B uh, whenever I pass this location, right? So the idea is that a pawn can be controlled. The next one after pawn, uh, which is the main one I want to focus on, is a character. So a character um, has a specific uh, functionality, just like the PC has uh, in comparison to a computer. Not only can it be controlled, but it can be controlled by a player. So a player can put input into its keyboard and into uh, you know, using a mouse or a joystick to control their character. So that's the major difference between a character and a pawn. And as you can see, I hope this example helps you understand this concept that Unreal Engine model the way it builds its world, similar to how the real world works as well. This is called inheritance in programming, but there's no need to um, memorize it or anything. Just understanding the concept is what's important. So what we're going to be working on in our application is going to be a character where we're going to allow it to move around and then give it animations based on the movement that it does. So this is the first concept we need to understand. So let's say from the previous example, we have a PC, right? And uh, let's say we just have the actual PC with one monitor, nothing else. So right now, you really can't do much with the PC. You can turn it on and you know, you'll get the screen up, but you can't do much. But what you can do is you can buy different pieces and connect it to your PC and then you give it extra functionality. So for example, you can buy a mouse and you can attach it to your PC. And once you put the mouse in and you connect it, now you have more functionality, right? Now you can move the cursor around. You can do stuff on the PC. Then you can also add more stuff to it, right? You can now add a keyboard and then you get extra functionality of the keyboard, which is added to your PC, 
right? So this is very different than the previous concept that we explored, where we said PC is an electronic and then we went down the chain. This is where we have a PC and we can connect different pieces to it to give it extra functionality. Unreal Engine also follows this same concept in how it does things, right? So let's say in our example here, we have a character class. Okay, so in my case, I had Wukong, but I have a character and this, as we talked about, is something in Unreal Engine where you can actually move the character. You can take player input. But maybe that's not a sufficient, right? Maybe we want to add more things to it. So for example, one of the things that you can connect to a character or add to it is a animation blueprint. Now what the animation blueprint is, and this is what we're going to focus on in these series of videos, is the animation blueprint gives us to have logic to add animations to the character. So for example, whenever the character is standing still, we want it to play the idle animation. Whenever the character is moving, we want it to do the running animation. And whenever we wanted to do an ability, we wanted to do the attack animation, right? Adding this, connecting this to the character gives us the ability to move it around. But in Unreal Engine, there's more stuff that you can add. So for example, you can add a camera to your character and this character, now this camera will move around with your character and it allows it to film it and that you can show that to the player, right? Or you can add a collision capsule to it. And what that allows it to do is it allows it to collide with different things. And if you want to enable physics, it allows that physics to take action whenever you hit something and stuff like that. If you understand these two concepts in Unreal Engine, you will it'll help you um, explore all different aspects and it'll help you understand animations better. So actually, let's actually go into Unreal Engine and let me show you where all of this stuff is. Whenever you choose a third person template, it comes with this blueprint called third person character. So if you move all the way to the right, you'll see there is a parent class right here and it says character. This is exactly what we talked about. Uh, whenever we said there are different kinds of classes where there's the actor and then there is pawn and then there's the actor. Another way you can see this is whenever you right click on anywhere and you want to create a new blueprint class, it asks, it asks you to create a parent class. And now I think it'll make a lot more sense to you because you can see that you can choose an actor and this is exactly what we talked about. It's an object that can be placed in the world. You can create a pawn or a character and there's all these other different things as well. So now you have a hopefully a better understanding of what this actually means. Now, how about the second concept that we talked about? So if you look on the left pane of the BP third person character, you can see that you have all these different components that are attached to it. And this is the concept that we talked about by attaching and connecting these components to the third person character, you're allowing it, um, you're giving it more functionality. So for example, here's the collision cylinder that we talked about. Here's the skeleton mesh, which is the body of the third person character. Here's the camera boom and the camera itself. So all these components <clears throat> are attached to this um, BP third person character, giving it more and more functionality. Now, the main one that we want to talk about here is the, if you go on the mesh, which is the skeleton of the character, this is what we want to animate. So whenever our character moves around, we want it to have some sort of animation. So this is what we want to manipulate, uh, because if you go into the details of this, you'll see that there is a um, animation section and in the anim and the animation section, there is an animation mode and anim class. And this is what we're going to cover as we go on in this tutorial. So for the rest of the videos in this series, I'm going to show you um, how to create an animation blueprint and assign it to the character that you have. You can use any character that you want. Um, just make sure you create a project and you have a character and you're able to move around either using WASD or mouse clicks because this is not something I'm going to go over in this series of videos. I want to focus on animations. So if you can create a character and make it move around, uh, whether it's the mannequin or if you want to use Wukong, uh, I'll put the link to downloading the assets. It's completely free and it's provided by Epic Games. Um, so create this base project, have your character able to move around and try to understand the concepts that I provided at the start of this video. In the next video, I'm going to showcase how to create an animation blueprint and how to make how to animate the character for it to be idle and then to play the running animation whenever it's moving around. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.